Caleb Quay remembers dearly his old friend from the Elton John band, drummer Roger Pope. I'm John Bowden from Rock History Music. To most people, the big Elton John band is Elton, of course, with Dee Murray on bass, who we lost in 92, Nigel Olsen on drums, who still, well, he left for quite a long time, but is now playing with Elton John again and has been for quite a while, and Davy Johnstone, who never really, in some ways, went away. Well, a little bit, but not quite. But there's more to this story. There's always more musicians. That core band, though, Nigel, D, Davey, and sometimes Ray Cooper, were there from Honky Chateau in 72 until Captain Fantastic and the Brown Dirt Cowboy in 1975. Of course, I'm talking them together and not always with Ray. They created, though, 12 of the 24 top 40 hits that Elton John created in the U.S. in the 70s. We should point out a big part of that, of course, was Bernie Taupin, his lyricist, Gus Dudgeon, the producer, and as mentioned, percussionist Ray Cooper, who was in and out of that. It's not the whole story. Guitarist Caleb Quay was there for the first four studio albums, and his friend, drummer Roger Pope, was on three of those. And it was both of those guys who came back for Rock of the Westies in 75 and Blue Moves the following year. Pope died in 2013. We asked Caleb Quay, about his old friend. He hadn't been he hadn't been playing for a long time. He had bad health issues, and um, he did let me see a friend of ours who's a producer in England, Martin Ford, contacted Roger and got him back in the studio. Roger ex had expressed a desire he wanted to start playing again. So our good friend Martin was doing a, a session, I forget the artist's name, but he got Roger in the studio and I think they cut a single or something for somebody he was producing and um, it, it came out well, you know. And so I heard about that and it was, you know, Roger was, was you know, he'd gotten hold of a new lease on life, you know, and was starting to turn the corner and then his health, it was too little too late, his health gave out. He was back in the hospital and, um, he never came out. Having talked to a few people who knew him, I never had a chance. My son discovered the song, interestingly, out of the blue and played a drum cover it online. And Sue Pope, his widow that you know, of course, contacted me, which was really nice. And she's such a sweetheart. And she insinuated that Roger was one of those devil may care kind of guys, yeah, rough yeah. around the edges. But I love that kind of guy because I grew up with those kind of guys on the East Coast. I love them. What you see is what you get. Externally, you know, he could be, he could come across as, especially in later years, he could come across as being, you know, rough, uh, rough exterior, a bit brutal, you know, in his comments, you know, but inside, very gentle heart, very gentle heart. Creative guy, lovely guy. Roger and I were tied to the hip through the 60s and the 70s. You know, we, we were very, very close. I will say uh, I had the opportunity to pray for him over the phone on his deathbed. That was the one thing. I wasn't able to be there. I wasn't able to get over there to see him. But, you know, we communicated by phone and I, I, I led him in prayer and he was ever so thankful for it. And his wife told me as well. His wife was there. She, she handed the phone over to him. And uh, it was really cool because his wife told me that uh, afterwards she said she said Roger was um, he says he was different after after you prayed for him you know and he told her he said you should hear Caleb pray for me so when I spoke to her I was able to tell her what I prayed for her for him so I prayed for her as well you know they're very thankful but Roger was a dear friend I mean Roger he wanted nothing else but the best for people and he just hated you know the injustices of the music industry and all the all the manipulative stuff he couldn't stand it he didn't like insincerity or the fakey phoniness would be the word he, he couldn't stand phony he was real he was a real guy technically roger pope was one of my favorite drummers from the 70s i know a lot of folks say well nigel's better nigel's different Nigel Olsen is right up there, too. I put them side by side as one of my favorite drummers. They're just different, though. I asked Caleb Quay about Roger Pope's chops. Whoa, my goodness me. He was truly one of the best drummers in the world. I mean, what a timekeeper. And you go back and listen to the... Oh, here's something for you. Are you familiar with um, the Tumbleweed Connection album? Oh, yeah, of course. Okay, the tune Ballad of a Well-Known Gun. One take, my friend. 
Really? One take. That was Roger. Oh, man. He'd grab a concept and nail it to the floor. That's how good a drummer he was. You know, so a lot of stuff that we did with Elton, quite, you know, quite a few tracks, nothing was done in more than like three takes when we were playing on it. We were tight. We'll have more of our conversation with the great Caleb Quay coming up next week. Comment on our video, subscribe to our channel, and share our videos. I'm John Bowden. This is Rock History Music. Mm -hmm.